Right folks, we've just been got the paper from Smith's in town and a few bits. I've got to go to Tesco's on the way home just to get some more bits. Um, I've come through Grove Park. It's a lovely sunny autumn day. Not quite autumn really. It's still summer for about another six days. It's officially still summer. It's all, it's um, metro meteorological autumn but it's still summer in the calendar. So, and it's a lovely day, it's warm. In fact, I think it's warmer than yesterday by the feel of it. It was, it was chillier yesterday, definitely. But it wasn't, it wasn't unpleasant. It was just chillier. People coming out, not knowing what to wear, guarded, carrying their coats, just in case. <laughs> so it's, it fluctuates the weather from day to day. Of course, there's a lot of English people that, and Scottish people, well, there are a lot of people, I expect, who, f who go off in the winter, don't they? I think there's a lot of famous film stars do and stars. They leave England very soon, like the swallows, and they go off to warmer climates and blue sky, the sun. Whereas, what I don't like the most about the winter, really, is the, it's the coldness. <coughs> and every, that makes everything cold then. The rain will be cold, the winds, you know, you can have a lovely wind in the summer and it's refreshing and cool. But once winter comes and the storms, but <laughs> apart from the cold then, I would say I like the different seasons in our country. The different colours, the different flowers, um, and we don't all have the option to say let's go over to France, south of France or something. I don't know what their weather's like in France in the winter or Spain, I'm not quite sure. I think they do have winters, um, but some people go further abroad, don't they? Caribbean. You know, hotter climates. Now, if you're here, you're here, and you survive, and you try to get enjoyment for what we've got. And I come out in the wood here, for example, a small example. <coughs> I go everywhere actually, but the change, the change with the weather is amazing. Somebody going down the hill. Yeah. Oh, it could be somebody in the quarry. Yeah, two blokes going down through that way. I like this little path. You do get people camping here. But like I say, in different seasons, I absolutely adore April and May when everything's coming out. And then now you've got autumn, which is also a beautiful time showing life, life and death and regeneration and all sorts going on. Um, there's something creative about it all and that's a, a symbol of either desperation or abandonment. People just up and going. Who knows where they go but the council pre in to tidy that I should imagine. They don't touch anything. Someone's got to come back and collect stuff. They've chose to be up here in the, in the piece. They've all got their stories and their lives. And you see extremes, don't you? Especially now we're all online. We see extremes of life. Very extreme. Some people being murdered. I'm not talking about watching murders, but you know, these wars going on and um, the, from that angle and then you, you get taken to beautiful places you can see a lot online you see you get taken to beautiful places 
where you never might ever go. So, I mean, I, I, I worked out in Palestine, Israel, if you like. Um, I tend to call it Palestine more, even though it was, uh, I was being on a kibbutz, not for religious reasons. It was an adventure to see the, the country explore Jerusalem and Bethlehem, all those sort of areas. And the desert, you know, I really enjoyed all that. And there was so much beauty out there, you know, so in, in the oasis like En Gedi. And then you were surrounded by the sea in many ways. You had the Red Sea, the Dead Sea, the Mediterranean, the Sea of Galilee. I went in all four of them. And um, so there was a little bit of adventure. And then I went to Greece up on the uh, theatre up in the air there. Parrots, I can't pronounce words very well. It's common apparently for some people, apparently, that have difficulty pronouncing certain words. I don't know really. I've got to, I'm going to be trying to learn German soon. I've got to learn how to read it at least, even if I can't speak it. Because um, because I could read French, you know, when I was at school. I learned to read French, but I couldn't speak it at all. Hardly, hardly anything. So I didn't pass it because I couldn't actually speak it. I think I got some sort of grade. But when it came to the, we used to have to do oral examinations. I just couldn't do it. Anyway, it did help me out though with words. French stuff, I tend to be able to have some idea what they're trying to tell us. More than I would if I hadn't done it. But we never did German or Spanish. Um, I think my daughter Georgia got a O level or GCSE in German. She did. She went to Germany, Georgia. So she might she might remember something. I can count to ten in German. I was taught when I was a small child by our Polish family friend and his friend who was a German a German dentist, believe it or not. And they both taught me how to play chess. Because they played it a lot, bloody brilliant, and um, they taught me. I think it was in just one day how to do German up to ten, and I learned it straight away. And um, I've never forgotten how to count to German in ten, but that was the end of it because I didn't have any more contact with either Edward or his his German friend. I'm not quite sure why they were friends. I don't know whether the German dentist was escaping Germany or whether he was one of them that had been a prisoner. A lot of Germans who became prisoners never went back to Germany because it had been taken over by different nations and split up, cut up, and they were probably still persecuting people. It's like Edward didn't go back to Poland. Because he could have been put down if he went back. It was a totally different country, taken over by the Russians. And uh, so he, for a while anyway, he didn't go back. A lot of his family were murdered. And uh, closer to home, my grandson's ancestors from Poland, a lot of them were also executed. And they weren't Jews, they were political prisoners. And they were executed murdered in the Auschwitz. So I've got a, something close to home, but that's just one side of the German tree for me because basically my German ancestors came to the UK in 1709. They were known as the German Palatinates and thousands of them made an exodus from Germany because there was a lot of an awful lot of battles and wars going on out there actually I mean, it, was, it was an upheaval Prussia, Germany and France at the time there were wars going on right left and centre and I think the Palatinate means was owned by princes um, in the past 
and um, I haven't found, I've only just joined this German group who are helping me find my history and also guiding me to, to um, archives where I can find out more. Now I do know an awful lot once I got over here and once they went to America but I'm still learning loads of course about that side of it but what I really want to know is more about them when they were in Germany. I want to know more about them and what the country was doing prior to 1709 or 8. 1709 I think when the mass exodus and they arrived a lot often arrived in Ireland and the UK first to get on ships and boats to go to America. Is there somebody coming? Well, let me let this man go by a minute. Hold on, I'm in the middle of a video. I just put it on hold. So basically, I know about that. I learned a bit more about the Mohican Valley or something. Um, something like that where the Apache, the, the Indian, the North American Indians at the time also allowed these Palatinates, these German, to have some land. Um, I don't know, there was a lot going on wasn't there with, in, with the North American, American Indians and the USA, don't forget. There was a lot of prejudice and snatching of land going on. But I think the this Indian tribe felt sorry for the Palatinates and allowed them some land. So I need to, that, I've only just found out that, I'm looking more into that as well. And then we've got, I did find out a little bit about the ones that went to Ireland. I'm just talking about my specific name, but generally we can look at them as well. Which is Stibe, S-T-E-I-B. I'm, I'm, I'm looking more into that. Um, so it's a lot to do and that's what, for me, winter is a time of hibernation where I can get into doing other things. And once I'm just cosy in my den, my family tree den, I achieve a lot in the winter. Sometimes I actually look forward to the winter. There's a time of... Oh, I've just got to find out where I am now. Um, oh, let's carry on this way for a bit. Um, sometimes I find out an awful lot in the winter and I do an awful lot of family tree work. The winter is when I catch up on tree. I don't mind going out on a cold crisp day when I know I can come home to something warm. Um, I don't know, I got carried away with um, people fearing the cold and the grey and the dark of winter. And I was saying how I think there's beauty in, in our winters and in different seasons. I got carried away then. I don't really know how I got onto the German Palatines. I'd have to go back and listen. Um, I don't really know how I got back, how I got onto that. But there's a lot of people about. You can't really do videos at weekends. There's always someone about. I'll just stand here for a moment so I can sort of sum up this section. So, it's a lovely autumnal day. Sunshine, blue sky, no wind, people walking out enjoying the fresh air and me rambling on about all sorts of things like I do. I get quickly carried away with everything when I'm out. But that's what I was saying about winter, about me, what I'll be doing this winter is getting stuck in to more family tree and now really getting stuck in to the German ancestry. I've gone back in only certain branches, only a little section, I've gone back a thousand years. I haven't done it with all, but I had a good lead and it took me way back. And I've explored that. It's never finished, of course. Oh, look at that. Those beautiful trees, look, aren't they? Gorgeous, that oak tree there. 
Beautiful. So different. You can take a picture in the winter when it's like this. It's lovely. Look at the green. It's still green. It's still very beautiful. We're so lucky, really. We moan when it's cold and wet, but to be quite honest, there's places in the world that love to have something green. <coughs> Would they? Yeah. And I've lost where I am now. Would it? Where am I supposed to come off? It's not there. Yeah, I came out a different path. I've never come out that way before. So we are so very lucky. There's so much richness in all seasons. I think what you, it's difficult. If you've been, um, say, born in a very hot country and you remember the sun and the lovely warm all the time, it must be, and it's your home, it, it must be difficult to see England in the same way. As I'm very English, very Western. Uh, a lot of people are, even live abroad. They're actually, their genes are very European. Um, you know, as they go back, they find they're very, very British, very English. But, uh, yeah, but it depends where you're born. Now, you see, look, if you look at my roots, I mean, I'm very fond of Somerset. It's, I was born in Somerset, so I feel at home here. You know, I feel at home in the hills. And if we go back in history, you'll probably find me somewhere in, in the southwest with the different tribes. But also, I'm very strong, very strong East Anglian. You know, very strong. Cambridgeshire, Suffolk, Kent. Those sort of areas, Essex. Very, very strong. Now, do I turn off down there? I can never remember. I should have a look. Could be. Yeah, I think so. So I understand it. It's like when I've moved away for six months and went up to Suffolk and Cambridgeshire, where my roots were very, very strong, I still wanted to come back to Somerset. And I wanted to do well, my own hills. You know, but I did want to stay up there longer. I was just, things didn't work out where I should stay up there longer. But basically, I could be seen as a foreigner in Somerset. If you talk to real Somerset people who've been here for hundreds of years, although I was born here, my parents weren't, or my grandparents, or my great grandparents, or my great great great. <laughs> Going back 500 years, none of us were from down here. So I could still be seen as um, an intruder into Somerset. But of course, now again, with uh, mobility, people moving around a lot, it's not quite the same now, is it? People are stuck in villages for centuries. Um, now you've got the problem with people with second homes pushing out people from Devon, Cornwall, Somerset, buying up other people's homes. So there is a, a strange phenomenon going on, which is being realised, and it's having consequences for local young people who can't even buy anymore. And they haven't got, and they can't rent. It's like ridiculous, to tell the truth. And where are they supposed to go? Where are they all being kettled? We got people from Birmingham and London down in Western Supermare, mainly drug addicts, because nobody wants them. You know. Anyway, to get off that, let's carry on with the walk now. So we're into the wood, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to turn off for a while, over and out.